Hey there, welcome back to AI Code King. If you've watched my previous video on a Vercel alternative called Coolify, you'll know that I don't like using services like Vercel or Netlify, where the costs aren't static and you're always in a guessing game about how much you'll be charged. I mean, there are thousands of horror stories about AWS and Vercel bills on the internet. It's like you think you're saving money, but then suddenly, you get a bill that's way higher than you expected. And it's not just the cost, it's also the lack of control you have over your own infrastructure. So, instead of using their serverless architectures or whatever, I like using my own VPS or self-hosted stuff. At least that way, I can manage the costs and make sure that everything is under my control, instead of these platforms controlling me. Plus. With self-hosted solutions, you can customize everything to your heart's content, which is really important for developers who want to have full control over their projects. But there's always an issue with this approach, and that is interactivity with the server. What Vercel provides is removing the hassle of setting up your environments and whatnot, and I respect that. You can just focus on coding and not worry about the underlying infrastructure. But with self-hosted solutions, you need to take care of all that yourself, which can be time-consuming and frustrating. But with the emergence of open source, you can actually use multiple open source tools to make your own Vercel that can be much more highly configured than Vercel, and you can host whatever you want without any hassle of using the terminal you get the best of both worlds, the control and customization of self-hosted solutions and the ease of use of Vercel-like platforms. I had already covered one of these tools on my channel, which was Coolify, but I recently found another one that is also similar, but I think has a much better UI, and that is Docploy. Docploy is an open-source alternative to Vercel, Netlify, and Heroku. It is a free, self-hostable platform as a service. It simplifies the deployment and management of applications and databases using Docker and traffic. If you don't know about Docker, let me give you a speed run. Docker is a way to package and run applications in a container. A container is like a virtual machine with a stripped-down version of an OS like Ubuntu or Debian. It is generally used to make sure that the application runs on every machine without any hassle and gets rid of the age-old saying, it works on my machine. It's like, you can just package your app and its dependencies into a container and then deploy it anywhere without worrying about compatibility issues. Anyway, the second thing it uses is traffic. Traffic is like an Ginx which manages your server's interaction with the outer world. It manages your open ports, application, domain, load balancing, and whatnot. This majorly comes in handy when you are hosting multiple applications, Docker containers that need to be served on multiple domains. It's like you can just configure traffic to route requests to the right container, and it will take care of the rest. Now, that was the base on which this project is built. Now, let's look at the features it provides. Because it uses Docker, you can actually deploy any application that can be Dockerized. It supports most languages, including Node, PHP, Python, Go, and Ruby. If you plan to use it like Vercel, that can also be done because it also accommodates Nixpack, which can basically build and serve your applications just like Vercel. It also has real-time monitoring, so you can keep everything in check about your server from one panel. You can also configure something like S3 or any other storage bucket to automate your backups. You can also set up databases through which you can easily reduce your backend as a service costs. Files can also be changed or edited directly from their interface. Also, you can create multiple users to share with your team. It also provides you with terminal access, 
so you don't need to connect via SSH to do any advanced configs. Now, let's do some practical and try to get this installed. First, come to this GitHub page. Scroll down and copy this installation command. Paste it in your terminal. Now, hit enter and it will start getting installed. Wait for some minutes and you'll see a link pop up on your terminal. Now, Docploy is installed. Go ahead and open this link in your browser. Once you open it on your browser, you'll be asked to register yourself. Get yourself registered, and you'll see this panel. It looks really great and very similar to Vercel. The UI is for sure better than Coolify. Here you have five tabs. The first one is Projects, the second one is Monitoring, where you'll see your server usage and other details. This is also amazing. The third one is the traffic file system. You can change your traffic settings from here. You don't need to do anything here if you don't know what you're doing, as the application does all the basic settings for you. The fourth one is Docker. Here you can manage your Docker instances. The fifth one is Settings. Here you can set up your domain. To set up your domain, you will need to update your A record in your domain's DNS to point to this server. Then, just write your domain name here. Enter an email so that it can send you details about SSL, and then in the certificate drop-down, select Let's Encrypt, and it will set your domain up with SSL, and your domain should start working. You can also configure your GitHub account here to deploy your private repos. Now, let me tell you how you can set up your project. First, click on the Create Project button. Enter your project title and description, then click the Create button. Now, your project has been created. After that, you'll see this page. Under every project, you'll need to create a service like front-end, back-end, DB, etc. So, let's create a front-end service here. Click on Create Service and click on Application. Enter the name of your service and click Create. Now, your service is created and you'll see it on the screen. Go ahead and click on it. Here you'll see multiple options. I'll tell you about all the options. But first, let's get the application deployed. To deploy, you'll need to set up your code provider. To do that, you'll see this section. The first option is GitHub. If you have configured your GitHub API keys, you'll see that this section will be enabled. The second option is Docker. If you want to deploy a Docker file, you can get it done from here. And the third one is Git. This is for public repos that you may want to deploy. I'll be using this option to deploy this calculator app repo, which is publicly available. Now, let's enter the URL here, enter the branch name you want to deploy, and click Save. Now, below this section, you'll see the Build Type option. It has multiple options of build process. But, as we are deploying a front-end application through Git, we can use Nixpack, as it will do everything we need. Now, click on the Deploy option at the top. It will take a little time, and you'll see this message pop up on your screen. To check the logs, go to the Deployment tab, and you'll find your deployment here. Now, we still can't access it until we set up a domain or expose a port. To add a domain, go to the Domains tab and add the domain here, and make sure your domain's DNS record is updated to point to this server. I'll be using it with a port on my machine. Anyway, once you do that, you'll be able to access it on your IP or domain. Pretty cool. So, it's now working. Now, let me tell you about the other tabs you have for configuration inside a domain. The first one is the General tab, which I have already told you about. The second one is Environment. You can set up your environment variables here. Now, the third one is Monitoring. This is different from the main dashboard monitoring. This tells you about the Docker container's usage and its metrics. 
The fourth one is logs. You can check your logs here. The fifth one is deployments. You can check your deployments here. The sixth one is domains. You can add domains here. And the seventh one is advanced. The tab has multiple options inside it. So, let me tell you about all these options as well. The first one is the run command option. Here you can run commands inside the Docker container. Then the second option allows you to set limits for your Docker instance, such as memory and CPU limits. Then there's the volumes option. Here you can set up your volumes for persistent data storage. Next is the redirects option. Here you can set up redirects on your domain. And then there's the security option. You can set up a username password to access your domain with this option. The next one is ports. You can expose ports with this option. And then there's traffic. Here you can change traffic config to your liking. Okay, that's done. Now let me tell you how to configure auto deployment through GitHub. You can go to the main tab and click on the auto deploy button and your projects will be auto deployed based on GitHub updates. Now, your front end is done. Now, let me tell you how to set up your DB. Come back to the project page and click on Create New Service, then click Database. Here you'll find five options for databases. The first one is PostgreSQL, then there are MySQL, MariaDB, Mongo, and Redis. Let's choose MySQL. Now, enter a name you want to reference this instance as, then enter description, then enter your DB name, username, password, and a root password. Once done, click Create. Now, your database will be created. Click on the database service, and you'll see everything here. It also has the same options as the front-end service. But, there's one new tab, and that is this backup tab. Here you can set up automated backups for DB if you need to. To set up backups, you'll need to first set up a storage bucket on your main server settings. To do this, come back to the main home screen. Then, click on Settings. Here, you'll see a tab named S3 Destinations. Go over here and click Add Destination, and your S3 bucket will be added. That was it. Now, you know how to set up your own Vercel clone and reduce your costs by a lot. And not just that, you can also use this on your local machine to manage your own sites, which is really cool. By the way, I'd like to mention that Docploy is still a relatively new project, and it's not as polished as Vercel or Netlify yet, but it has a lot of potential, and I think it's worth keeping an eye on. Also, the community is very active, and they're constantly adding new features and improving the existing ones. Another thing I'd like to mention is that Docploy is not the only open source alternative to Vercel and Netlify. There are other projects like CapRover and Coolify, which is also a self-hosted platform as a service that uses Docker and Kubernetes. And then there's also Render, which is another open source alternative to Vercel and Netlify. So, if you're interested in exploring more options, I definitely recommend checking out these projects as well. Let me know if you'll be using this or not in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.